with all the ongoing thermocouple debug, I've had three confirmed issues. Number one, I did only originally have one thermocouple, which is right here now, and it was broken. Number two, when I tried to buy the low-cost replacement meter that came with a thermocouple, the meter had loose contacts, so the thermocouple wasn't making good contact. I was getting intermittent readings. And number three, using this XTEC clamp current meter with a K-type probe interface, I was using it incorrectly. I was cooling down the actual probe and then plugging it in here, and I was probably messing up the thermal profile so it couldn't get an accurate reading. Now that that's all sorted out, I still have this broken thermocouple. So since the one that came with the low-cost meter did have screws and I could take the enclosure apart, I just wanted to look inside to see what to expect, and they use screws to clamp the terminal, so there's no extra dissimilar metals with soldering, and everything comes in cleanly and the two wires go where they need to go. No problem. The one I bought for $7 can't easily be taken apart, so I can't look how they did it. And the original one that's broken also didn't have screws, so I couldn't take it apart. But I pried it apart because I thought, it's not working anyway, it's not doing me any good. It took a little disfiguring. It doesn't really look as bad as this, I have to still snap it together. I had to pry this open with a screwdriver, but then the rest of it came off relatively seamlessly. And I can always epoxy that back once I'm done. So I thought I might as well take a look and see what's happening in here. One of the reasons I wanted several good probes without throwing too much money at it, you know, I could spend 20 or $30 per probe on DigiKey, but this was seven. And this came with a four something dollar meter for free. So just characterizing the resistance of a good thermocouple this one, it depends how tight you can get the probes, so I, I think normally I see 14 to 18 ohms on them. Right now I'm seeing 12.6. But the point is, it's not a dead short less than 1 ohm, which I was seeing on the bad one. This other working one that came with the cheap meter, there's 18, 19 ohms. I think I can get it to show 14 or 15 if I squeeze hard enough and do it differently. but it's still not a short. This one, it was all shorted. Right now, now that they're separated, I get 13 or so ohms, 12 or 13. So right now, I think if I put this back together properly, it would work. But I was getting like 0 0.6 ohms on here, and that's just a short. It's not going to work. So this is just the thermocouple wire and electrical tape insulating the sharp alligator clips so I can clamp onto the sheath. And here's the two K-probe ends. They also used non-soldering. They crimped it on. So that's good. And it's kind of hard to see through all this. But around here, there's kinks in the wire on both sides. Somehow this got all twisted together, I guess. Maybe coiling this thing up several times, and this is really loose, I don't know. It's serving a bit of a strain relief, but it doesn't secure anything. So this possibly just got twisted over and over and shorted out. And now I separated it as best I could, but they are exposed all the way down into the recess here. So I'm not sure how to go about insulating these again. I could try putting heat shrink on each one, but those thin wires are behind these thicker terminals. So I would need thick heat shrink to get down there and I wouldn't be able to secure it properly. I think I'm just going to epoxy this. I'm going to get these vertical and in a position where it looks like they're separated. And then I'm just going to put epoxy here and assume it won't interfere with the functionality and it will keep them apart enough and I'll put it back together. It's always good to keep the box from oatmeal cookies. You never know when you're going to need to epoxy something. I prefer to use the two separate bottles where I can independently apply the epoxy and mix it because that single plunger dual tube one, it always gets gummed up at the end and the plunger ends up going sideways and you're forcing it and then it all comes out. I, I found this to be the best way. And I think it's cheaper. This is 118 milliliters per bottle. 
and it's about $25 I think I paid for this set. The other tubes that are more like $10 only have, I can't remember, maybe 25 milliliters or less. So this was a better deal and a better system and a good use for toothpicks. So with all the fibers of this sheath, I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to get it in there where I want it. It might get caught up, but it really doesn't matter much at this point. I'll try to get this crimped up as vertical as I can, so I'm not going to be stuck with a hardened splayed mechanism that won't easily go back into here. I think that's the best I can get it, so I'll wait for that to harden and come back and see how it turned out. It's still around 14 ohms or so, 13 or 14, so hopefully this is it. Now it's been long enough that the epoxy had enough time to partially cure but still be pliable. So this strain relief has a space to go into and it holds in place. The probe tips have a space to go into. So I pushed everything in its place and the probe tips are separated. The epoxy is there to keep them separated. And now I just want to double check that I don't have a short. So I still have my 13, 14 ohms. That's good. It either works or it doesn't at this point. There's nothing else I can do for it. So I'm just going to put some epoxy around the perimeter here and snap it together. See what happens. And my epoxy workstation has um, secured itself. So I need another batch of epoxy. I still like how clean and easy this is. It smells bad, but it holds good. So I'm just going to go around the perimeter. I don't really worry about the aesthetic on this. It just has to hold together. Especially this back end, I think, is more compromised. And this is why I stock up on things like miscellaneous clamps when they go on sale. That'll do. Now I wait. Multi-purpose solder. And that's got a nice glossy finish on it now. It's holding together well, but time to try it out. That blue clamp is also good at holding the LCD on a legible angle. So here's the low cost temperature meter that we've come to trust. We have 21.7 degrees room temperature. And these are the three thermocouples that I've been working with. And their probes are scattered around the bench relatively close. So this one seems to want to go first. This one has the screws on it, so this is the one that came with the meter. And it's, we'll say, 20 degrees versus 21.7. This is the one with the green wire that I got for seven dollars recently. And it started right at the exact same. And then it started going down a little bit, but it's tending toward 20 degrees. And this is the one that was shorted out and read less than one ohm across the terminals. Now it's reading around 13 or 14. This is the first time trying it out since I glued it back together. 19.6, 19.7. The exact same as the other two. They all have different resistances within four or five ohms, but they all are working the same. Well, it's tea time. Time to test these thermocouples using boiling water or close to it. The room temperature in here is closer to 23 degrees. This one says 18, but it's always been a bit off. So both probes at the same time in almost boiling water. And they both go up 88 degrees, 86 degrees, 85. So what is the analog temperature of the water? 
looking at the lower degrees Celsius scale, it's rising up, and we have 81 on the digital thermometer, 77 on the multimeter with thermometer interface. Overall, that's reasonable, and I'm still surprised at how the cheap thermometer for a couple of dollars seems to be holding up across temperature ranges. So I guess in the future, depending what my needs are, I'll know which unit to grab and how much to count on it, depending what I'm doing. So that was a good test. But now I think it's break time. It's hot enough. 